before I start speaking about me, Alex, I'm going to speak about you for a moment. I think you are remarkable. As beautiful as our work looks and how well described it is to you in print and in person, she steps back and gives it to the artists. And good God, she's an artist herself, as that shows. So thank you, Alex. Thank you for making me part of the family. Uh, uh, all right, how do I describe this? It's, uh, I have no notes, we're just going to, to swing with it. I have been following the loss of our earth for many years as a painter. Uh, I also have followed the destruction of cities and the rebuilding of them. Uh, wherever the urban, rural, nature pulls me. But for the last, well, my first trip was in 2018. I've taken three trips to the Arctic Circle. Uh, my last one was this past November. This one I chose to be specifically the last of the tourist ships, although I went on a Pirates of Pinzance sailboat. <laughs> and. Uh, also the darkest. The last, I'd say, five days of my stay, the sun didn't rise above the horizon. So it was dark in a way that we never feel unless we truly seek the edges of the places we go. And as our prior speaker said, yes, they're magical. They're truly magical. So I went for several reasons. One, I was pursuing true darkness, and I was pursuing no sound, the lack of human voices and the mechanics and the roar with which we live in today and take for granted. Now, the Arctic, Greenland, Iceland, this last trip to an archipelago off the north west coast of Norway, they have no trees. Trees do not grow here. They have grass, they have small growth, no trees. And in Norway, no snow, permafrost. And when the wind blows, the frost rises and intermingles with the sky. So sometimes no horizon lines as well. And some, some people were asking questions. I am the least expert you're going to hear today. Please take that for granted. So what I am telling you is only what has been told to me. So half of the glacier sometimes is smooth because only 10% is above water. 90% is below. It flips. And when it flips, you will get a softer, non-pointed sty. And then when it rises and crackles, that's when you will get the tooth of the glacier. Mm -hmm. Something else happens, too. When there is no sound, you can hear nature's sound mm -hmm. so strongly. You really don't hear birds. There are no birds. I mean, there are something. Pelicans are pelicans birds, maybe. Mm -hmm. But there are no flapping birds around. So what you hear is the most, it's what John Cage writes about, he, uh, composes. He composes things called silence, waves. You will even hear today composers doing symphonies mm -hmm. about that which we have lost. And this is what has happened. So anyway, back to reality. I guess this is reality. Yes, I can speak to you. I, I, I work in many mediums. I started when I was so young, I needed special written permission from my mother to draw the nude models right. at the Art Student League. Yeah. So there you go. I played the piano with no talent whatsoever, but determination for nine years. So sounds important. Painting is important. 
but all the arts are poetry in one form or another. Now, I have finally hit upon my dream of a medium that I respond to, and it's watercolor. And immediately you think of Victorian ages and ladies with large hats and bouffant skirts. But no, watercolor can be extremely aggressive, creative, and forever manipulative. You can move it anywhere you want. So if you see a piece such as, oh, this is oil. Oh, dear, I started on the wrong foot. We'll speak about oil as well. No, I'll speak about this place. My last trip, we were the last ships allowed because the ice was locking things in. So yes, it was a sail ship, but it also had an ancillary motor. So in case we could run the storms. The first two days when we docked, we docked here. We go climb down the side of the ship, go into a zodiac, hit the land, you're in rubber boots up to your knees, climb, and that's what I saw. I was standing here, and Alec, the Glacier Mountain, was there. It was that close. And it was bathed in light. And then I saw at the edge a small shape. I didn't know what it was. Was it the sun? Was it the moon? No, it was the moon. And it, that was permafrost, not snow. And so you have the Nothing moves and everything moves. Mm -hmm. Tons of ice don't move, but they move. Permafrost moves, the wind moves. And so you've got this wonderful time. Anyway, okay. Uh, remarkable. I just painted that. Okay, let's go on. Here's watercolor. It's on white paper. And because I couldn't, uh, at that time when I started it, I didn't have a large enough piece, so I made it a diptych. Mm -hmm. uh, it takes about three, four months of layers. Mm -hmm. You paint it, you blow it with your hair dryer. You paint it, you blow it with the hair dryer. There are many ways of creating white. You can remove the paint and take it down to its original thing. If it wasn't working, you can scratch it out. You can use paint by draw, squeezing a small tube and make it linear. You can put white paint on and spray it. You can turn it upside down and spray it. Mr. Clean Sponges, Great Erasers, <laughs> swear to God. So this is at night. I use well, you really can't do watercolor out there because the water freezes. I tried painting with vodka because I <laughs> swear to God, but vodka froze. So, okay. So you do quick sketches and then they have a warming hut on top of, of the ship and it's a little place you all squeeze in and you do quick little things there. And then you come home, you have the sketch, you have the photograph. And what you want, though, and what keeps me going back is what the first speaker spoke of, the magic moment. Mm -hmm. So you take everything you have, but you can't really use it 100%. You jump from that. And watercolor allows you to. Sometimes I start with it this way and then turn it upside down and go, oh, it works better here. Well, why did I start it horizontally? It's a vertical. I also move the image back and forth to decide where I want us to stand seeing it. Sometimes I want it straight in your face, and that'll pull you in. You actually put your nose almost to it. And then sometimes I want it further back on the horizon. So. I don't know when I start, where it'll take me, but after a while it takes my hand and says, go sit down, you've had enough for today. <laughs> and thank God for that. At 88, I sit a lot more. I see it in the mirror. 
I pin it upside down. I walk away and then peek at it to let it surprise me. So I want to see it with tired eyes and fresh eyes. And that helps me go along with it. Okay, next one. Oh, we have that one. Okay, next one. All right, this I did not sketch or photograph. I just took what I saw, worked with the memory of it, and this is the smallest thing I've done. And is it real? Perhaps, but it's real enough. So, also there, color is different. Color is not pigment. Color is the pigment, but you're dealing with soft light and cold light, warm and cool. And you're, t you're t interpreting white warmly, coolly. And as a landscape painter, morning light is cool, afternoon light is warmer. Don't ask me why, but that's what I was taught. Here, you want to differentiate, but you've got, it's like, how much can you create with a limited voice? We'll ask Bach, right? You know, he'll take two, three instruments and you've got it. So it's a search. That's really all I can say for it. Now this I had decided, all right, I'm going to use a whole different palette. It's green. It's green-white. It's not blue-white. And is something like this somewhere? I don't know where. And I just did it. And it happened. And it's the touches here are scraped. And then I said, no. So then I put some white titanium on. And then I said, no. So I took a small squeeze bottle and removed some of it. And I said, yeah. <laughs> so, and then I followed the drips. The drips told me what they wanted to do. So I followed them, literally. Okay. And this has a lot of scratching in it. And what you see here is uh, what you see there. It's a, a composite. That there's really nothing to say. Uh, there are different kinds of whites and different... What you see, if you see a blue-white, it's usually a composition of Payne's Gray, Cerulean, Meyer, Indochine. It's four or five different blues. Then you have warm black, you have cool black, warm white, cool light. But you're going to see very little cadmium red and cadmium yellow. It isn't there. It isn't there. The beauty I think of these places is like, I don't know, I never dreamt in a lot of color. I always dreamt in a lot of quiet. And so that's what I've done here. Ah, this is a little bit of what I saw and a great deal of what I wished I could see, but it was underwater. So there you go. And uh, it was a daytime photograph that got me going on this one. And there you can see that I've pulled some of the blues separate from some of the others, so that you've got, uh, but they're basically warm blues in that. Oh, this was fun. This is all spatter, and I usually don't like it. I take a large, Japanese flat brush and I put the paint on and I mix the water and then I take it and I hit the hit it just hit it hit it hit it hit it and turn it upside down and hit it hit it so it can drip vertically one way and drip sometimes the other way and in some pieces I'll hold it on an angle and then the drips will come and curve and so that would happen. Uh, that's me doing something else. I'd, oh yes, one of my pictures, which isn't here, is I took my paint palette 
and cut it in different pieces and put it together to become the painting of the glacier. And that's, yeah, that shows all the different, that's my largest, but it shows all the different whites. How did I achieve it? On the upper, upper top, you can see I sprayed it and then I wet a paper towel roll and I pull it down. So it's multiple layers, dry paint, dry paint, dry paint. Yeah. And then I turned it upside down and that's why you've got as active here. It wasn't only pulled with the paper towel, in reverse it dripped. So, and sometimes I'll make a hole in a piece of cardboard or something and spray it so I can control where I want it done as well. And then I think it's probably the final one shown today. And again, it's, it's a composite of it. But moving back to sound quickly before I end this, uh, and light, we are, we are confusing our migratory birds now. The city lights are pulling them off their appointed pathways. So it's not only the glaciers. There are so many aspects of our world that are tenuous. So uh, go out and march and vote and, and thank you, Alec. I think that's it. Oh, I forgot. I sculpt. I sculpt, yeah. Those hands are, ooh, okay. Those hands are plaster of Paris, which I've painted, which I like it's fun on them because they're not fun hands, they're sort of cri de coeur, is that none of them are attached to the base, so that they can be turned to speak in any manner you want them to. So that's it. And I am now also doing hands a great deal. And I, I've scoped it through the years. And this one was started because about 30 years ago, actually, I, I did this because of his arthritic right hand. Wow. And so I took, it's larger than life size, but I went, that's what pulled me in. The, the hands that cry, the hands that wow. protest, yeah. and all of it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Thank you.